Soldier Field couldn't be a more aptly named background for the staging of a civil war. And that's just what looms ahead as the Chicago Bears host the Philadelphia Eagles. Forget about the fact that the Eagles have never won a game ever in the Windy City dating back to 1939. Recent history is what has the fans excited today. In case you've been living on Mars over the last year, let's review what's happened so far. An assistant coach named Buddy Ryan helped guide the Bears to a Super Bowl championship last season. Now he's head coach of the Eagles. Although Buddy ran just the defense last season, some felt he took too much credit for Chicago's overall success. The outspoken Ryan is never afraid to say what he thinks about anything or anyone. He has waged a war of words ever since he was carried off the field on Super Bowl Sunday. Now he returns to the city of his greatest triumphs, facing his old team and his former boss. Bears coach Mike Ditka has hurled a few verbal darts in Buddy's direction too. But Ditka's best weapon of all is the NFL's all-time leading ground gainer, Walter Payton, who will be the key player in today's game. Another plot twist in this soap opera is that Bears backup quarterback Mike Tomzak, not the injured Jim McMahon, will start today. Even with this lineup change, the Bears are still more than a two-touchdown favorite. It's a clash of teams and two strong-willed coaches. A rout is predicted, but emotion can often change all that. It's the Eagles and the Bears on the NFL Game of the Week. The tone of this game was set on the very first play as the Eagles sent a very harsh message to the Bears that this was not going to be a cakewalk, despite what the so-called experts were saying. Taking note of Philadelphia's opening statement, the Bears and Mike Tomzak retaliated with a quick strike of their own as tight end Emery Moorhead, number 87, broke free for a sizable game. Then Chicago committed the first of several mistakes that kept the Eagles in the game. Rookie linebacker Alonzo Johnson, number 54, swiped a Tom Zach pass, and Philadelphia was in business. Eagles quarterback Ron Jaworski fired completions to wide receivers Mike Quick and Phil Smith, number 83, to move into Bears territory. But then the Chicago defense clamped down exhibiting the swarming style that Buddy Ryan had taught them so well. So kicker Paul McFadden was summoned for duty and he promptly whacked home a 49-yard field goal. The surprising Eagles led 3 to nothing. But what was even more amazing was that there would be no more scoring by either team for the rest of the half. The Philadelphia special teams, flush with success, then continued to bruise the Bears with even more harsh kickoff coverage. The Eagles were playing as physical a game as the Bears, but they can't yet match runners with Chicago. All-time great Walter Payton busted loose for a long game. And then the Bears crossed the birds up with a running play from wide receiver Willie Galt, number 83. Another unlikely ball carrier, quarterback Mike Tomzak, was forced to flee when his receivers were covered. But that wasn't such a terrible thing after all, as it put the Bears in field goal range. Unfortunately for Chicago, kicker Kevin Butler did not make the conversion. Butler's first miss was a forerunner of things to come, missed chances that would plague the Bears all day and keep the Eagles in contention. Bears defense allowed 31 points the previous week in their opener against Cleveland. But today they were as nasty and stingy as they were during last season's championship march. No matter what the Eagles threw at them, Chicago was ready. And they also wanted to prove to former coach Buddy Ryan that they were just as good without the old man standing there to crack the whip.
Rookie runner Keith Byers, number 42, is one of their most frequent victims. The former Ohio State All-American found the monsters of the midway a lot tougher than the Big Ten defenses he faced in his college days. And the Bears' pass rush was in mid-season form, too, sacking Jaworski three times in the first half alone. would need frequent relief from other Eagle quarterbacks as the incessant Chicago punishment gave the veteran signal caller a headache or two. After the Bears defense made the Eagles see stars, the Chicago special teams then lit up Soldier Field with a big punt return by tiny rookie Lou Barnes, number 81. sizzling run back went for naught, however, on an illegal blocking penalty. But having Walter Payton on your team covers a multitude of sins. And the wonderful ones saved the Bears bacon this time, too, with several key plays that helped earn him 77 rushing yards in the first half alone. This nine-yard run in the second quarter gave Peyton 15,000 career rushing yards, an incredible achievement for an athlete who has not missed a single game since his rookie season. In the heat of an emotional battle, Peyton's professionalism and dignity could be appreciated by both the Bears' friends and foes. But once the laurels were handed out, it was a harsh return to reality as the Eagles zeroed in on Peyton, making his every effort a painful one. Immortal or not, Philadelphia was not going to back down, sending both verbal and physical messages to number 34 that his yardage would not come easily. was temporarily stopped, and the Eagles' offense wasn't faring much better. Philadelphia never even got into Chicago territory in the second quarter, thanks to consistent defensive pressure. As the half wound down, Chicago made one more stab at the scoreboard. It started off as it usually does with Peyton breaking free to the outside and up to midfield. Tomzak then hit little Lou Barnes for an important, if not picture perfect, first down pass reception. The ball still belonged to the Bears, but they could draw no closer when all-pro safety Wes Hopkins, number 48, closed down runner Dennis Gentry. With two seconds to play, Butler attempted his second field goal, this one from 52 yards. But once again, the Butler did not do it, and the Bears were denied once more. The half ended, and shockingly, the Bears had no points and no lead. The world champions were supposed to run roughshod over the hapless Eagles, but Buddy's boys were becoming more bothersome by the minute. There would have to be some major improvements by the Bears, or else they would feel the wrath of a none too happy Mike Ditka. In his worst nightmare, Ditka could not imagine losing this game to Buddy Ryan. But now that nightmare was perilously close to reality.
Jim McMahon could not have been very happy. The Bears had not scored in the first half against an Eagles defense that had allowed 41 points the previous week. Yet Chicago's Maverick was helpless to turn things around. What McMahon did see, however, as the second half began, was a Bears defense that continued to extract its pound of flesh. It didn't matter who the Eagles had at quarterback, Jaworski, Matt Cavanaugh, or Randall Cunningham. Each took a snap on Philadelphia's first possession of the third quarter. But when Cunningham was run down, the Eagles were forced to punt. Philadelphia's next series ended much more abruptly. Keith Byers fumbled and Dan Hampton recovered, and the Bears had the ball at the Eagles' 34-yard line, six minutes into period three. With Mike Tomczak struggling and uncertain, Chicago turned to the finest player this generation has had the pleasure of watching, Walter Payton. Number 34 was at his slashing, darting, energetic best as he attacked Philadelphia's run defense. Straight Peyton Burst set up this well-conceived and beautifully executed pass from Tom Zack to tight end Tim Reitman, number 80. With the ball at the Eagles' one-yard line, Tom Zack again called Peyton's number. And this time, that number was 100, as the Bears' brilliant back joined Jim Brown and John Riggins as the only players in NFL history to reach the century mark in rushing touchdowns. Peyton's shining achievement seemed to shift the momentum in a game that had featured inept offense and bone-crushing defense. The Bears had pulled in front 7-3, and somehow you sensed that Eagle hopes for an upset were quickly fading away. Chicago continued to assert its dominance on the kickoff following Peyton's touchdown. Starting safety Dave Dewerson, number 22, nailed Philadelphia return man Junior Tadalatasi before he could get started. Three plays later, Dewerson again made his presence known, this time benefiting from a strong Chicago pass rush to intercept this ill-advised throw by Jaworski. The Bears were on one of their now familiar defensive roles, producing two turnovers in less than four minutes. Another touchdown here, and the game would likely be tucked away as yet another dominating Bears defensive victory. When Peyton powered ahead for 18 more yards, it appeared that that scenario would come to pass. But Philadelphia's defense stood its ground. And Chicago settled for a Kevin Butler field goal of 23 yards, increasing its lead to 10 to 3. But Mike Ditka was not pleased. The pressure was beginning to build, and it would get a lot more tense before this game was resolved. The burning question around the NFL this season is whether the Bears defense without Buddy Ryan can remain the overwhelming force it was in 1985. The players are the same, as the Eagles and particularly quarterback Ron Jaworski found out. Jaworski was pressured all game, and there were a number of times he barely managed to escape more serious trouble. The number seven is a veteran of many years who often seems to be down, but rarely can be counted out. And that proved true against Chicago, as Jaworski properly recognized Blitz, and with one delicate toss to Mike Quick, number 82, 
beautifully brought the Eagles back in this seesaw struggle. Quick's touchdown catch was his first of 1986 and his 35th in 47 NFL starts. A remarkable total for pro football's most prolific wide receiver. The Eagles had come back against the league's best defense. Now it was time for Philadelphia's defense to assert itself. The Eagles have been gradually learning Ryan's famed 46, an alignment that, when working right, is very difficult to run against. That was not the case against Chicago, as Walter Payton continued to explode through hole after hole on his way to a 177-yard rushing afternoon. But again, Philadelphia proved stubborn, and it was up to Kevin Butler to break the 10-10 tie. Butler did not, missing this 37-yard attempt, and the game remained deadlocked. So the Bear defense went back to work. The Eagles insisted on running the ball, something nobody does against Chicago. Finally, with just over nine minutes left in the fourth quarter, the Bears caused another turnover. Linebacker Otis Wilson, number 55, was the man on the spot. And his return put Chicago in excellent position to produce the go-ahead score. But the Bears again came up empty, and the pressure again fell on their defense. Jaworski was beginning to crack under the pressure of Chicago's relentless pass rush. And unfortunately for the Eagles, number seven was forced to leave the game with less than two minutes remaining in period four. Jaworski's replacement was Matt Cavanaugh, and Cavanaugh's presence certainly livened up the proceedings. In the final minute and 14 seconds, number six threw two interceptions. This one to Mike Richardson, number 27, who promptly fumbled. The Eagles pounced on the ball. Three plays later, Kavanaugh again delivered a perfect pass to Richardson. And this time, the Bears cornerback returned it to the Philadelphia 38-yard line giving Kevin Butler a chance to win it for Chicago in regulation. Butler, the NFL's leading scorer a year ago and one of the league's most accurate field goal kickers, had missed three of four field goal tries against the Eagles. Now, with seven seconds left on the clock, he had the opportunity to redeem himself. But the kick would be from 55 yards, a distance he had never reached as a pro. The kick was short. The game remained even, and regulation had ended. This game, thought by most to be a mismatch favoring the defending world champion Bears, was not going to be decided until overtime. The Eagles would get the ball first. All they needed was a couple of first downs to get in position for their field goal kicker, Paul McFadden, who has a stronger foot than Butler. But Philadelphia would never get that chance. Number 45, Charles Crawford, burst up a seam in Chicago's return coverage, only to have the ball pried loose. The Bears' bestie Jackson, number 24, gratefully clutched the ball in his grasp. And it would be the Bears, not the Eagles, who would have the first, and as it turned out, the only needed opportunity to win in overtime. The Bears simply gave the ball to Walter Payton, and as always, number 34 was up to the task at hand. He carried six times, the final time reaching the six-yard line. From there, Kevin Butler was not going to miss. Butler drilled home the 23-yarder, and the Bears escaped with a harder-than-expected 13-10 win in overtime. It was not Ditka and Ryan that determined the outcome, but a Hall of Famer named Peyton and a youngster named Butler.